ready. You have to just close the doors, Betty. Being 7 o'clock on Monday, November 19th, 2018, I would like to call to order the regular school committee meeting. Our agenda will be as follows. Visitors, approval of minutes, teaching and learning highlights, MassQ student presenters, School committee vote to appoint a school nurse. Second reading of policy IJNDB, Internet Responsible Use Policy for Students. Approval of OPM, Owners, Project Manager, and Architect Contract Amendments, the Burrell Elementary School Project. FY19 budget update acceptance of donations or a donation and other matters do we have any visitors this evening okay I would like to move on to approval of minutes are there any additions or corrections Uh, I would like to address something on page four, please. It does say that the first high school musical production in 10 years is, was to be performed, which was excellent, by the way. Indeed. Uh, we do not have the exact year uh, of the last musical, and Mrs. Marino just has been retired fully for only a year. So I would prefer it to read in about 10 years. You could just say several years. Well, or we could say in several years. Several years. Because none That's of us accurate. know the exact date, and I think that, okay, <coughs> in several years. I think there might have been one when Juliet was in school. Oh, I, kn I know. I when mean, did she graduate? 2011. I know. I know it hasn't been a full, right. full decade. But I tried to confirm it with her, but I couldn't reach her today. Yeah. Juliet would have been a freshman in 2008. So right. Yeah. Right. So I think at least one then. Right. I think so several will cover it. Several. Yeah. Several will cover it. Okay. That makes me more comfortable. Thank you. Make a motion to approve the regular minutes um, as amended. I'll I'll second. second. It. Oh, we're all we're all second. <laughs> <laughs> Give it to Rich. It's all yours, Rich. Go team. All in favor. Five zero zero. Thank you. <clears throat> Mass and Learning Highlights, MassQ Presenters. Dr. Verdos. Oh. Our, fa our favorite part of the agenda. So we have many friends that I'd like to invite up to the visitors table. So our MassQ Q kids, if you'll come right up, just grab your chairs. And as you're bringing your chairs up, I'll give a little bit of background so those that are watching us on TV at home can understand exactly the part that you did in your presentation. So MassQ is the Massachusetts Association of School Superintendents, and they partner with the computer user education, which is the technology leadership across the state, and put together a state conference that takes place in mid-October. It's a technology conference for <laughs> educators and educators present, but they also have an opportunity for students to present as part of Qbytes. And that presentation, students can range from kindergarten, of which now first graders, but all the way up to high school students. And we had three different groups from Foxborough this year that were selected to present at this conference. We're going to hear from our elementary and our middle school presenters this evening. And the Q Kids portion is an opportunity for students to share with others, how do you integrate technology in a way that's going to be engaging and you're going to impact learning. And you will hear this evening from our presenters that they did just that. So before I turn it over, the Qbyte session from our middle school students was social learning in the math classroom. And you're going to hear specifically about the flip grid. And one of the things that I want to make a note of, which I think is so fascinating, is a year ago at the MassQ conference, 
one of our teachers presented on Flipgrid. Only a year later, we have students presenting on Flipgrid, which is so amazing. And then from Ms. Wayne Ribbs' classroom and Darlene Reed, who is the technology integration specialist at the elementary level, their Cubite session was digital storytelling. It's elementary. So we'll turn it over to you so you can say who you are and um, what your presentation was like and how was it presenting at Gillette Stadium? So, Miss Lai, how about, um, so we have Alicia Campalone, sixth grade teacher, and Noah Lai, eighth grade teacher, and they're with, here with their students, and we have a quick video that's going to show part of the Ignite session. So one of the things just I'd like to make a note on, the Ignite session is students have two minutes or less to explain what they're presenting and it's grades four through 12. If you're in grades kindergarten through third grade, it's optional to be able to stand up in front of a camera and do that. Our kindergartners at the time chose to do that and we have their video here as well. <laughs> so I'll come and help you with technology, Ms. Lai, as you talk a little bit about it. <laughs> or Ms. Campolo. <laughs> So um, we I went with the middle schoolers, so we have George, and we have Will, and we have Addie over here. So George is in eighth grade, Will and Addie are in sixth grade, and they were able to present about Flipgrid. Do you want to tell everyone what you talked about with Flipgrid, how we use it in math? Yeah. So um, basically what we do with Flipgrid is, um, so my Miss Lai would... Um, get, uh, well, would write up a prompt, and that prompt would, I would get a notification on my phone saying, well, Miss Lai created a new prompt, and I would go to, I would enter the code and sign into my um, Office 365 account, or if other schools use um, Google Classroom, and then I would um, make a video, um, like say the prompt was I would have to solve a math equation and explain how I did it. I would make a video explaining how I solved the math equation and what my answer was. And I, then I would submit it. And also, I could also view other people's submissions and comment and have like a video conversation back and forth with the person on how they, um, how they did the problem. And you can also uh, like the videos, which I find really fun, <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. So um, the teacher can choose if um, the whole class sees it or just the teacher. So if just the teacher sees it, like only she can like say notes or something. And if it's the whole class, um, then you can, the whole class can see your video, but um, it's not like anyone else that's not in your class. And what I think is cool about it is if you um if you like think something's really cool that you made like in a STEM activity in like science or math, then you can show it to your classmates mm -hmm. and see what they have done and you could get like you could think of like you can see what they did and add on that to yours your project. Mm -hmm. So you have about uh you can the teacher can choose how much time you have to make the video. So you can have uh, a minute and thirty seconds five minutes or unlimited time now that we have the premium um, for free because it's free for anyone with Google Classroom or, um, <laughs> or uh, Office 365. So that's good. Excuse me. Wow. You can yeah, make a, a video in a minute and a half? Mm -hmm. I need to take your class. <laughs> <laughs> so these three did an awesome job um, with Adi Yozo, who couldn't be here tonight, just explaining to the teachers and the other adults at the conference how they use Flipgrid. Um, you had the adults there make sample Flipgrids, right? So they went around with iPads and had adults there make their own Flipgrid so they can kind of see how it worked. Um, they showed some videos that they had made in class. So they did a really, really nice job speaking with the adults. So it's easy to use Flipgrid? Yeah, yes. it's, yeah, the learning curve's not that steep. Um, <laughs> well, it's, it's pretty easy to use. All you have to do is tap a few buttons and press record, and then you're all set. Um, also, another great thing about it is that you can take notes before you record, so you can, like, see your notes, and while you're recording, you can, like, say, oh, what was I going to say again? Oh, I can look at my notes. And the notes are discarded once you've submitted it, so no one else can see your notes but um, you already are explaining it in the video, so no one needs to read your notes because you're explaining it in the video. 
You usually get it on the first try, or do you have to do a couple takes? A couple takes. Couple couple yeah, takes. the teacher explains it sometimes yeah. in the classroom. Yeah, that's good. I'm pretty sure I don't know how to do anything that they're talking about, so I'm very impressed. I am And I can't wait to see their presentation. So what is a flip grid exactly? Um, it's like a way to see other people's, your teacher would give you a prompt that you would have to answer, and then you would answer that on a video that you can record yourself, and then you can, you can like take a picture of yourself but you don't have to, and then you would put it on, onto like, a you would put it, you would submit it, and then everybody else can watch it, including the teacher. It's almost like a blog. So if you think of if you actually flipping through something, but it's there all digitally, and you can see all, <coughs> right? am I right? Yeah. You can see all the different submissions, and then you can learn from each other instead of just learning from your teacher. Yeah. That's yeah. kind of the point, and right? And also, the exact words that we said, I don't know why I still remember this, but um, we said Flipgrid is an online learning resource that students and teachers use in their classrooms to make videos to get inspirations something like that very good mm. very nice mm. also, when you did, said flip flip grid i i used to teach filmmaking mm -hmm. and you know when you see a movie you do not see motion you see several sequential motions so fast that it looks like moving mm. So I used to make my filmmaking students, their first thing they had to do was make a flip book. Mm -hmm. And you start at the like bottom yeah. and just do slight different sketch all the way through so that when you flipped it, it, yeah. it made it look like it was moving. You might have seen that children's book. It's museum. just the illusion of movement. Mm -hmm. It's several. So I, did, I didn't understand what a flip grid was. Thank you for explaining that. So what's really cool about it is that it's a website so uh, and, and, and an app. So I can access it from my um, cell phone. Mm -hmm. and, I could, it, and if I don't have a cell phone, I can also act it, access it with a computer. And um, we have computers in school, so if I don't have an internet connection at home <coughs> or I don't have a device at home, I can uh, use the in-school computer and do it in school, which is um, great because you, you can do it in school because so there's no no excuse for not finishing <coughs> yeah. the project. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so is it homework or is it an, is it in addition to your regular academia day, well, or is it extra curricul extra um, credit or? It's, all, it's sometimes. Yeah. It's all of all the above. teacher okay. can yeah. choose. Yeah. So in sixth grade, we've been using it more in class. I think you've been assigning it for homework. We do a combination. Okay. We're using guided math, and we use it for a homework assignment to reflect. Got it now. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a great way for the kids math. to see yes. in math that there's more than one way of solving a problem. So mm -hmm. Maddie solves a problem one way and Will solves it the other way. They can watch each other's videos and learn a new take on how to solve the problem. That's fantastic. So. I think it's very visual, you know, what, what the kids are doing on their, you know, with Snapchat and Instagram and right. YouTube videos that it kind of works with the media that they're used to mm -hmm. um, in their daily lives, communicating with each other, and then it kind of makes the homework probably more, more fun. Do you yeah. think? Yeah, yeah, a little more fun to do the math this way. Have you discovered that other people might have a more efficient strategy than you and you've mm -hmm. learned something from Definitely it? Definitely, all the yeah, time. Like, if you're stuck, <laughs> then you might see like what they're starting off with and that might help you. That's great. Do you find that you learn it better sometimes by speaking it and talking it out? And it um, shows it shows your better understanding, and you kind of figure it out differently than just writing things on paper. Yeah, and if you if you realize when you're saying it out loud that you made a mistake, that could help. For me, it helps if I say it out loud. It makes me understand it more. Makes sense. Yeah. So, would you like to see the cubite? Yes. Portion. So this is George, and this. So this was just to introduce Flipgrid to the the audience. This isn't actual Flipgrid itself. This is a commercial for Flipgrid. This is George on a youth. Students sitting yonder and they're acting like a pack of fools. Ding, 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 
free interactive learning tool for students, and it's called Flipgrid. Flipgrid is an easy-to-use free app that allows students to create videos based on their teacher's prompt. It could be about a math question or about a certain concept they're learning. Not only will this help students with understanding the lessons they're learning, it will also help them with their social skills as well. See, after they make a Flipgrid, their teacher can either post it to for the whole class to see. Students can like, comment, and get ideas from other students' Flipgrids for their own. And the best part for teachers is, is that it's free to use if they have a Google or Microsoft account. For more information, please come visit us at our Flipgrid booth. Thank you. Very impressive. Thank you. Thank you. Good explanation too of everything. Thank mm -hmm. you. I like the song. By using technology. So Ms. Wainwright, do you want to talk a little bit about our digital storytelling? Introduce sure. Jameson and Liam. Sure. Yes, this is this is Jameson and Liam. And Emma, I thought she was supposed to be here, but she's not. Um, well, in kindergarten, obviously, first we have to teach the kids how to write, write, learn letters, learn learn um, how to put the letters together to make words, and eventually, at the end of the year, they write stories. Wow. So we used to do it writing stories. Well, they still write, but now we've incorporated technology to with their stories. So, do you want to tell them a little about what you did, what's in your story? So we went on PowerPoint and we, um, we did um, the solution, the problem, and we did our characters, and, and then we did the setting too. And we drew pictures too. And then we went on the computers. We 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 typed in our stories and then we draw the pictures and we put in our names so we know so they know who it is and <coughs> Yeah, and also they like they recorded our voices and it went in and it went into our story, and it, there was like a speaker thing. If if you clicked on it, it would say what say what you said, and like if you type something, it will say the exact exact same thing if you say the same thing, and and if you want to um, go on the next page, like because there's a story <coughs> thing, and you could click on the next page, and if you went on the next page, you could like go back and forth and if you um went down the thing it would look like it was moving and backwards and it came like an illusion I found out. <laughs> That's pretty and neat. also you have to realize when children come into kindergarten some of them don't even know how to use the computer because mm -hmm. they're so used to using swiping you know with their their their, la their tab their la tablets so we really have a lot to learn <laughs> we have to teach them ha how to use the mouse how to negotiate it, and then with all the literacy that has to go into it, and it was it was it was hard <coughs> they did it, and they and we oh at the end we um, invited parents and families to come so the our budding authors can showcase their stories and we put it on the whiteboards and we had an author's tea. Very nice. Oh, how very lovely. nice. <laughs> Well, I feel old That's now great. because we had author's teas when my children, who are now graduated, <laughs> but they were hard copy books, and this sounds like much more fun, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. hard copy also yeah. so they get to go home. The hard copies apps. are cool, but this digital, yeah. uh, digital uh, literacy sounds like a lot of fun, especially the voice recording, so it's you telling your story. Yeah. I think That's really cool. exciting. So to do the Ignite sessions here with these presentations, again, kindergarten through third grade, that's, that's pretty hard to stand up in front of an audience mm -hmm. at Gillette Stadium and present. Yeah. But not awesome. for Jameson and Liam. Yeah. <laughs> and they, can I just say, they didn't even know they were going to have this. That's right. That. So <laughs> they, it was like last, the last minute thing. Mrs. McCarthy signed you up. Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She surprised you. See it. 
technology. This is Emma, Liam and Jameson. Thank you. First we created the story. We had characters setting problems. We went on PowerPoint. We typed our stories. Then we draw the pictures. We recorded our our voice reading our stories. And after they did all this, we invited their families, and we had a author's tea so that they could showcase their wonderful work. Hey, that's fantastic. So lots of great ideas for integrating technology to make things a lot more engaging. So what was your favorite part, um, Mrs. Wainrib students, of your visit to Gillette Stadium? I think I might know, but I'm just curious. <laughs> Pat Patriot. Oh. <laughs> ah. Would you like to tell everybody what you got to do with Pat Patriot? We, we got um, lots of autographs. Mm -hmm. we, we did Fortnite dances with him. Yes. <laughs> and we did what? Fortnite, dances. Oh, Fortnite <laughs> dances. And what other dance did you do? Mm. Do you remember? No. You did it super fast. The floss? Yeah. <laughs> they the were floss? able to floss, yeah. <laughs> That one went on Twitter. That's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That on Twitter. Now we can remember. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh -oh. <laughs> How many people do they do you present to at the Mass Q? How many people were there? In the Ignite or in, in the, the in the, the Ignite where they were well both, I guess. They had a lot of traffic out yeah. at the booths. Yeah. The Ignite space is a little bit smaller. Uh -huh. How many people were in there? We just I think there were there were probably about eight or ten tables. I yeah. Think. Yeah. And then people come through mm -hmm. and they ask they questions. ask the kids questions. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's awesome. There's over a thousand people at yeah. the conference. Yeah. And then those that are going through. And the other table that we had were three of our high school students, mm -hmm. and they presented on what you've seen with what they did through Senior Inc. with the Ukraine. Yeah. That's pretty cool. That's great. That was a cool project. You yeah. should all be very proud of yourself. It's Absolutely. really hard to speak in front of audiences. I think this is George's second trip to the school <laughs> committee. I know he's, I know he's been here before. in November, right. so it's great to see you, George. I did recognize <laughs> you. <laughs> he's a repeat. I see you guys, too. <laughs> Thank you. It's great to see all of you. Thank you for coming. And thanks to the teachers for really experimenting with technology. Yes. I mean, I think the kids, would you think that's a good thing that your teachers are experimenting with technology to make your learning experience better? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah thanks for putting the time in. Awesome. It takes Absolutely. extra time to get it ready for them, so mm -hmm. it's really much, very much appreciated. But it makes it all worth it, doesn't it, when you see the end product oh, yeah. that it's they create? Yeah. It makes it more fun for us, too. <laughs> and there's this cross piece, sixth grade to eighth grade, and the mm -hmm. constant vertical articulation that we have when we look at the curriculum. It's a great way to collaborate, and it makes it a lot more fun, too. Yeah. Well, thank you again. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Very much. Come again. I think George will. Very <laughs> <laughs> confident, though, to be able to speak like that. Wow. I can only imagine when there are seniors in high school. Right? Right. That's fabulous. Fabulous. We're going to see George again. <laughs> Many times. <laughs> I mean, what conclusion for kindergarten? McCarthy, Mrs. Yes. Abrams, thank you for coming, too. Thanks. Yes. Yep. Thank you. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Bye. Bye. Okay. <laughs> school committee vote to appoint a school nurse. Dr. Verdos. <clears throat> okay. So, um, as you are aware that any nurse appointed at state law has to be appointed by the school committee. Lynn McGeary, who is the point four nurse at the Ahern, resigned at the beginning of the school year because she went full time at Newton Wellesley Hospital where she also worked. And so um, you have the resume in there for Nicole Quinn, who is the 
new point four. She's been a daily sub for us. Mm -hmm. And once they have the, they have to have two licenses actually. There are in which she has, as you can see from mm -hmm. her extensive resume, comes in with quite the experience. But they also have to go through the Department of Elementary and Secondary Education right. to acquire that second certification. So once she has that, then we're able, or you're able to mm -hmm. actually do the appointment. Okay. So she is an RN? Yes. Yeah, her resume is very impressive, and yes. she's been a substitute for us for a couple of years yes, now. Yes, for a couple of years. She's actually <laughs> subbed in other districts, so we were really fortunate to be able to have her come on yeah. um, with us on a more regular basis. And she's, um, kids love her, teachers love her already, so it's a great team over there with Jen Rosenberg, who's the, the full-time nurse. Mm -hmm. Has she been filling in since the start of the year? Yes. Great. Great. Well, welcome. I'll make a motion that we um, appoint uh, Nicole Quinn as our school nurse at the Ahern, our second school nurse at the Ahern. I'll second that. All in favor? Five zero zero. Congratulations. Debbie, yeah. before we move on, I want to just say we'll, Lynn McGarry will definitely be missed over there. She mm -hmm. was a wonderful oh. school nurse. and. It's exciting. She's got a full-time opportunity at Newton Wellesley, but I know you know many, many, many parents who have had just wonderful things, myself included, mm -hmm. to say about Lynn's kindness and caring and compassion over the last few years that she's worked for us. Many years that yes. she's worked for many us as, as a school nurse. So, thank you, Lynn, for all of your hard work. So. Oh yes, but it, what a nice opportunity oh, for her. Oh, absolutely, yes. absolutely a great opportunity. But she will be missed by our, many. our students and our parents. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. Second reading of policy IJNDB, Internet Responsible Use Policy for Students. We'll make a motion to waive the reading. No second. All in favor? The <laughs> reading is waived. Five zero zero. Any further discussion? The only thing I would note is that up at the top, I think, I, I just think the line is through the U. I think it should be through the A, so that the parentheses will be responsible use policy. Mm. I-R-U-P-S, right? Yeah, I think so. Because I think they took the internet out. And yeah. Okay. That's, that's all. That was my only, my only thought. Other than that, I think we had a good discussion about this mm -hmm. at our last meeting. And Thank you guys for your work on this policy. It's something, I think this particular policy is something that we're going to continually be working on because oh, we I, have, it's going we to, have been and I think we, as, as social media and yes. everything continues evolve. to evolve and our kids are using it at younger ages and I think, I think this is a policy that our committee and all school committees are going to have to continue right, to look at but the internet is going to continue to change oh absolutely so this is this is a moving document it is a moving indeed. living document it is so you know, we do our best right. to keep up with it yes. <laughs> right so but and even just looking at the times it's already been revised I know. 2012 mm -hmm. 2015 yeah. mm -hmm. 2018 Constant. absolutely and it may even become more frequent mm -hmm. yes with the I would think so. leaps and bounds that well, we just I, don't know. I think as you'll, you'll continue to see different cases, you know, go through the court system on this Absolutely. very subject. You know, it's, it is something that has been almost untried, um, you know, over the last, it's, it's getting more um, exposure and yeah. I think we will see more uh, legal decisions that will impact. As case law comes as out. As case law right? comes out. That's what I was yeah. trying to get. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, but I think this is a, a good, I'll, I'll make a motion that we um, accept the Internet Responsible Use Policy Students file IJNDB um, as presented. I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five zero zero. All right, approval of OPM Owners Project Manager and Architect Contract Amendments. Ms. Deutner for the borough project. <clears throat> so um, the school committee authorized a subcommittee back uh, at the beginning of the project to um, <coughs> review uh, different uh, OPMs and different architects. Um, you later approved uh, KBA as the architect and Colliers as the OPM. The contracts were written under the MSBA guidelines, which allowed for a continuation uh, if we made it out of the 
uh, feasibility stage. Um, so really what was then negotiated after uh, the feasibility stage was strictly a, a financial uh, dollar value to go into the second phase. Second phase obviously being the full construction documents, construction management, and then close out. Um, so in the um, OPM's case, you had, had originally had a contract for 161590 to get us through that first phase. Um, the amendment, uh, which will take us through um, 2021 um, basically is a, an increase of $801,800. Um, they originally requested more, which was what was on our um, Form 3011 to the MSBA, which they approved, um, but there was a, an amount that was going to be over the allowed percentage by the MSBA. Um, I renegotiated that agreement, so it came down by $137,000. Uh, to get us under the MSBA's requirements uh, and actually saved us about 20000 from there. So um, what I'm going to need is, is basically two votes, one to amend the, the OPM and one to amend the architect. Um, and in this case, it would be the OPM Colliers International uh, to increase um, their contract by $801,800 to a total of 939700 So that would be my first motion request. I'll make that motion. Well, Janet, can you can you write, write it, the motion just as Bill said it? But so what was the out? new total fee? So the new total would be 939700 Yep. No, I'm sorry. Is it 963000 Oh, sorry. 963. Nine, 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 no, sorry. No, what is it? 963. Okay. 390. Right. Okay, you're looking at a different number. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So look yeah. here. Right. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry. And the increase that we're voting is the 801 what? 801 what? 800. 801-800. 801-800? Yep. <clears throat> Would this have been typical under no matter who we had hired? Well, the no, it really depends. The, the, the problem with uh, both uh, architects and OPMs, you don't hire based on low bid. You, based on, you hire based on qualifications. Mm -hmm. Then you have to negotiate the, the financial side. Uh, the nice thing is in this particular case, the MSBA has a guideline for what they believe is appropriate. I will say that while both these seem like a lot of money, they still fall within the MSBA's mm -hmm. uh, requirement, but this is a, a phased two and a half year project. So they're on site for a lot longer period than if you were doing new construction, um, and therefore they have to have manpower. In the OPM's case, they literally, once we hit the ground next November, we'll have to have somebody on site every single day that a contractor is there through the end of the project. Um, so there's a lot of manpower and a lot of hours that are involved with it, not to mention the oversight of their entire company and any uh, additional work that the rest of the company does, which is very typical for the OPMs. And this brought us this brought us just under the guidelines of? Yes, just under the 3.5% so of construction costs. If something else happened, would we be on the hook for that? No. 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 Okay. Negotiated well. I'll second it. Was there was there a motion yet? I, I, made, I, made I, I did make no. I made the motion. Um, so you just and then, and then you can second I'll it. I'll second it. Yeah. Before we vote on it, though, I would like to just interject that um, when we were in the feasibility study and hiring the OPM, the amount of hours that went into the committee to hire Colliers as the the, the amount of um, review of the proposals it was significant at the time. So I I mean we really felt then that they were the best choice for this project based on their experience and uh, commitment to the project, the kind of uh, the other MSBA pro projects that they've worked on, they had the requisite um, qualifications. So I, I feel pretty confident that they're going to do a very good job for us going forward. And, and I would oh, say sure. to this point, they've done, a, they've done yeah. an excellent job. They're, they're they are very, um, they are a large firm uh, as compared to some of the other projects we work with, much smaller firms. Uh, the beauty of that is they bring a lot more resources to you. Um, we had a similar situation with the town hall with a different mm -hmm. OPM, very large. Um, but the beauty of that was when we got in trouble with um, hazardous materials, they had a whole division within their group that handled that, and that's why we were able to get okay. through very quickly. So that's kind of why we looked at colliers also in the, in the right. same type of sense. It, it's this is this is we we anticipated from day one this was going to be a more complicated project mm -hmm. than a standard you know we got a blank slate we're going to build a building right. um, and so that's why having a, a strong team is very important to us. And you said you negotiated with them to bring it down. Is yeah, that right? they, they they're like I said their um, their original contract price was the nine hundred thirty nine thousand seven hundred. Um, 
and I, I got that reduced down by the 137 900 uh, to get us down to the 801 800 difference so um, they were originally 117,000 over the MSBA thing, so now we're about 20 under it. Yeah, well done. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great job. Yeah, Bill. thanks for doing that. Okay, we've had a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor? Five zero zero. The second one is um, Castle Booze and Associates, which is KBA. Uh, they're the architectural firm we've <clears> been working with. Um, I feel very strongly about them. They've done a, an excellent job to date. Um, this again because the project is is uh, more difficult you really have to understand at an earlier stage whether or not you can even do a renovation mm -hmm. so they put a lot more effort in uh, than most would expect to do in the schematic design and they you know knew that they were kind of buying their their basis forward because they had to do it um, so in their case the amended amount um, is two million three hundred and twenty seven thousand seven hundred and seventy We've already approved, or you've already approved, uh, the 378,000 in the first feasibility and schematic design phase. So when you add the two together, we'll end up with that total of 2,705,770. And as you can see in both of these, there's phases in which the money is associated mm -hmm. with um, getting us through, uh, whether it's the original design, the actual bidding process, the construction itself, and then the completion. I would move the additional two million three hundred twenty-seven thousand seven hundred seventy dollars. I'll second. So these were expected costs, right? Because there was nothing filled in originally for the yes, design. Yes, exactly. Okay. So the but again, in, in, in each one of these, the MSB has different guidelines for what they anticipate these two mm -hmm. areas to be. And they again, they will only participate in their funding up to those guidelines. You can go way over if you'd like, but you're going to yep. pay the full amount yourself <laughs> above that. So, um, and all of these amounts fall within the MSB yes, guidelines. Yes, now, now both of them fall within, which actually will, you know, um, is fine. And mm -hmm. again, the, the, the Form 3011 uh, is the actual budget. That's already been approved by the MSBA, so they're actually going to see a reduction in our Form 3011 uh, from the OPM. Um, but they've, they've already kind of sanctioned this whole thing themselves as well based on the project that was the scope we're dealing with. <coughs> and this is a Foxborough company? No. Uh, well, KBA is, yes. KBA, yeah. They're actually, they're, they're corporately out of New Britain, Connecticut. Um, but they have a uh, a office here in five matter of fact they just moved into the old state hospital uh facility mm -hmm. uh, beautiful office over there they used to be over off of um forbes boulevard there i guess okay and chris they've done other projects for the town you know mm -hmm. yeah. this same firm yeah. Yep. yeah they did the, the they actually did this high school with us uh and they did the joint public safety building with mm -hmm. us one of the beauties I, i've got to tell you and this is my has always been my comment uh, commentary to the um, MSBA when we've been dealing with them is that it does make a huge difference having a local firm especially when you're doing a renovation because so many things can happen during the day yeah. Yeah. that you don't want to have to wait 24 or 48 hours for somebody to come out uh, to do <laughs> and what's really been nice with KVA is uh, Joe Milani who's been the lead for almost all of our project he goes by our projects mm -hmm. on the way to work and he goes by on the way home and if something comes in the middle of the day he gets in his car and comes over and for us if we need to we can go right to their offices too yeah that's so why that's, that's why i asked about the yeah. fox pro question so it is it's really uh, to me i think it's a critical thing on, mm -hmm. on complicated projects it, you know might not be as much on on you know a less complicated project he is meticulous he oh, is yeah. very meticulous oh we're very fortunate to have them so, agree yeah. and they're very proud of what they do oh absolutely mm -hmm. yep. should be all right. So we had a motion and a second. Do we have a vote? Are we for the discussion? Ready to vote? All in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Bill. And you're still up with the FY19 budget update, please, Mr. Yukon. So as you can see, at, at this point, November 16th, uh, we really haven't had any um, changes to our budget. Uh, you know, as far as financially. Uh, we are holding extremely tight to most of our budget lines. Um, the issue that I have been kind of talking about for the last couple of years, uh, this is really the first year that it's coming extremely close. Um, as you know, when we go in the budget process, one of the requirements is that we have to make up $125,000 mm -hmm. in salary reductions mm -hmm. based on retirements. And it's, it's been a kind of a, a rule of thumb that was put in place years ago, rather than people trying to guess who's going to retire at the end of the year. Town always said, well, if you use this, that's basically five, you know, five retirements during the year, and that seems reasonable. 
and it has been very reasonable. In fact, we've been fortunate to be over, and that's given us some of the money that we've used on some of these other CIP projects uh, for the last couple of years during the summertime. But this year, we basically were very tight. So in the end, um, we had a couple issues happen. We had basically fewer retirements, um, and we also had the need, uh, which we don't always have, but we've had in the last couple of years too, with move-ins for uh, additional ed assistance. Um, we had uh, two or three kids come in that had that requirement in their IEPs, uh, so we immediately had to fire, hire a for one-on-ones. Um, How so many one-on-ones do we have throughout the system, do you know, <laughs> offhand? Not it's, just one-on-ones, I, I, I don't know that number. Yeah, no, um, no and, it, and it's not many because that our, our philosophically we look to, to not go towards one-on-ones, yeah, one, but there are some three. needs right. that, that, require, a, that require that. And then, oh, and just some needs, said, but not. If we oh. have someone that moves in and that's within their IEP, then, then the laws we have to then provide, provide. a one-on-one. -on -one. So we've had those move in this current school year. And then the second piece to that is uh, already this year, which is, is very unusual for us, we've had um, a number of people go out on long-term medicals. Mm -hmm. um, it's not unusual for us to have you know people go out on a pregnancy leave or something, which is usually 8 to 12 weeks, but we've got some long-term medicals that are going to go for a while here. And the reality is if they have obviously um, not used their sick time, we're paying, we're going to be paying them for their sick time, plus we've got to pay for a replacement. So this year we're going to be extremely tight on the salary lines. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously I've got some concern on it. I'm, I, I'm comfortable right now that we're in check, but if we have anything else that really comes through this year uh, that creates a major salary cost, mm -hmm. that's, it's going to you know, be an, a, a thing that we're gonna have to find up uh, in some of our expense lines. We'll have to make some changes um, and go from there. So, um, <clears throat> so basically, I, I guess I'm just putting you on notice that, that it is a concern I have. At this point right now, we're good. Um, but it is something that can happen, um, you know, very easily over the next uh, six months. Okay. So we're hopeful for no more extraneous no more <laughs> challenges. <laughs> exactly. Mm. Is there a motion to accept Mr. Yukner's report? I um, make a motion to accept Bill Yukner's report for the FY19 budget summary statement. A second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Five zero zero. Acceptance of donation for the Foxboro cheer from the for, uh, Foxboro cheerleading booster club. Dr. Baradas. So you're aware that yeah. whenever we have additional coaches that are added on, booster clubs will mm -hmm. then support those, and that is what you have here, which is the Foxboro cheerleading booster club to support the fall cheerleading JV coach. So it's a donation of one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. Make a motion that we accept the donation from the Foxboro Cheerleading Booster Club in the amount of one thousand two hundred fifty dollars with gratitude. I'll second that. Discussion. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Do we set the, do we set those payments? Uh, that th that's it's our recommendation from the school it's system. Within our contract, then we have different tiers depending on the the sports and the amount of time that goes into it. So yes. So it's so in the contract. It's in for the contract. It? Yeah. Even though it's a donation, it's in the contract. Yes, yeah. it's for the what amount. What happened that years ago, Rich, that, that created a lot of problems for us is that the, unbeknownst to the administration, is that the boosters clubs were going to the head coaches and saying, "Well, we think you need some more support. We'd like to do this," and they would be doing it on their own, and they would then be paying them on their own. The problem we had is obviously we we're not going through all of our our standard, you know, checks. We don't go through the quarries. We didn't go through everything else because we didn't even know that that was happening so a couple years ago um, we, we changed the whole process and basically went to all the boosters club and said anytime you feel that you'd like to support additional support within a thing we feel that we are supporting what needs to be there um, through the educational budget but if, if you want to put more in because you feel it's it would be good for your, your students and whatever that's fine however it comes through us we're going to go through all our vetting processes and we're going to and and we will actually be paying them directly ourselves um and doing and, the appointment and for doing that. the appointment so Thank you. it yeah. was kind of a cleanup and and it's worked very well since mm -hmm. but it was, i would i would have suspected yeah, we yeah. did that but i'm glad i asked because i wasn't 100 percent yeah. sure good question i think it was very easy for that to go get loose pretty quick yeah so the check comes from the foxboro public schools no the check comes from foxboro yes club. the check comes from foxboro right. the, the boosters club to us and then, and then we, we then the issue company. the payment back out to the appropriate individual that did the, the, the okay. job and they can't even do it now until uh, the superintendent approves them through the process of a normal hire. Okay. 
Right. So again, we have full full you know knowledge of, of who's knowledge and control right. yeah. and Correct. authority. Well, and that's also authority checks, yeah. oversight, everything. Yeah. 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 Well, that's protection for the young people too. Absolutely, mm-hmm. it makes right. perfect sense. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We have a motion. We had a motion okay. in the second. And any further discussion? Mm-hmm. All in favor? Five zero zero. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Other matters. Actually, would it be all right if I started tonight? I made a statement at our last school committee meeting, and it I thought I had used the percep- word perception during part of what I said. If I did not, it should have been interjected. Uh, I had stated that it's preferable to have people who are not teachers Uh, serving on the teacher contract. It was not a mandate that they could not. We can serve as school committee members on teachers' contracts. Uh, In this case, it would go, I mean, Chris could perfectly do it Mm -hmm. because he belongs to another union. Uh, Richard actually never was a teacher. I was. In Foxborough. Not in Foxborough. Not in Foxborough. You were an administrator in Foxborough. Right. Okay. So in it, if I were to recommend how it would go, I would say choose Chris first, then um, Richard. For me, there was a time 12 and 15 years ago that there was a very contentious feeling. And it was perceived that if I... And, you know, perception is worse than reality. Or that I might be fit because there was a standoff on a contract and there were posters and signs and walks and were they going to strike. So it was perceived that if I worked on it, I would favor the teachers. So I have always chosen to recuse myself because I was a long-time teacher in Foxborough. So it, is it clear now? It, it's just, I mean, if ever there are two people on the school committee who would like to do it, because Marilyn, you said you never worked and you would like to Right, do I did it the assistance year. last year, so I, I do certain, this year. Yeah, I certainly would lean that way for perception. Correct. Well, I have, I'm happy to do it, I'm just, but I appreciate you clarifying it, especially oh, I mean, since yeah. Chris and, and Richard are going to do our education assistance negotiations. That, right. You know, right. everything is completely, you know, transparent there. Yeah. So I appreciate So I've clarifying. always chosen to recuse myself mm-hmm. just because of that uncomfortable period. And, you know, we just, we just have to be careful of perception and mm-hmm. all we, I always. mean, just like, you know, covering things correctly for the, for the students, for you know, extra coaching and things. Okay. Okay. Do you have other? Um, the uh, varsity football is playing at Fenway tomorrow. Oh, I know. Um, at 7.30. I have a rehearsal. It's going to be 18 though. degrees, so <laughs> bundle up. So I'm not really sure that I'm going in. We shall see. Um, but I'm very excited for them, and it's a chance in a lifetime. It's, it's lousy that, you know, some people are different traditions this year, but it's exciting for the kids and their parents and our school. So good luck, boys, and happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It is once in a lifetime, and thanks to our wonderful Foxborough Cable Access Station. Mm. If you can't get into Fenway tomorrow, <laughs> you can good. watch it live mm-hmm. on Foxborough oh my gosh. Cable That's Access so, on the exciting. Education Channel, Channel 37, if you have Verizon, and I'm not sure what it is if you have <laughs> Comcast, because I have Fios. But um, that uh, that brings me to my next point about Fox Road Cable Access. I wanted to um, let the committee know that Dr. Bairdos, and I appreciate her doing this very much, submitted comments to the FCC by last Wednesday, which was the deadline uh, for submitting com- comments in support of Fox Road Cable Access. So Dr. Bairdos did on behalf of Fox Road Public Schools, and I, I know I submitted my personal comments, but hopefully there won't be any changes to the current FCC regulations and our wonderful oh, that is, Fox Road Cable Access will stay um, as funded as they are now. I think that's great. That's a concern for all I think cable it is. access. Absolutely. Is. Yeah, so hopefully um, that will, you know, play out. But I did appreciate, I know Dr. Berdos put a lot of thought into her comments, and as I did, so we appreciate everything our 
cable access Absolutely friends do. are doing and they will I the whole crew is going to be there tomorrow night so and I, I will say that our um, former committee member Bruce Gardner will be videotaping and his son Brady will be doing the color commentary yes. because um, our usual commentators are unavailable tomorrow night. So oh, you can listen for FHS grad and Great. current BU student and son of Bruce and Michelle tomorrow that's evening. That's exciting. That's fantastic. Yes. I did have a couple other th quick things. Uh, the Taylor School is doing Junie B. Jones, a musical on Friday, November 30th and Saturday, December 1st. I think 7 o'clock on Friday and 2 p.m. on Saturday. So Friday, it, November 30th right. and 2 on Saturday. Saturday, December 1st at 2 p.m. And also the FHS swim team is going to be hosting a dinner on uh, Friday, December 7th at the V for our veterans. So any veteran, I saw a flyer up around school and on Facebook and on uh, Social uh, on Twitter. <laughs> I was like, what's, what else am I trying to say? At 6 p.m. So I, I think Coach Butcher is, uh, her husband is, a, is an Air Force veteran, and she is uh, organizing this just to give back to the community yeah. with our swim team. So that's great. So that's all I have. But I think it's a wonderful effort. That's, I, it, that's an example of our kids doing community service. I know our Rotary Interact Club took toys to kids at Children's Hospital this past Saturday and you know our kids and we we heard um, our DECA club is doing a community service project so our kids are just doing great things yeah, all over the community yeah a lot of our students were giving at out all levels um, yeah. the turkeys the yeah. other day for the veterans yeah we, we delivered to the local veterans the other day through the JC I believe the JC's ran it so um, that was lovely a lot I saw a lot of students yeah. in the parking lot yeah which was nice. Kids who do things. We've got great kids. Yep, we've got yes. great kids here in Foxborough. Sure. Really Chris? Uh, good luck to all the winter athletes trying out next week for oh, all yeah. the different sports. Yeah. Make sure you're registered on Family ID. That's mm -hmm. it. Rich? Just, I want to just say thank you for all of you for six months. Uh, <laughs> I've been here for six months, so yeah. thanks for your support. <laughs> thanks for the school district supporting me in, in, in learning my learning the ropes here for my first six months. Oh, we're just getting a hold of you. Wait yeah, I know, I know. Wait uh, see what's going on. Glad ahead. to have you, Richard. Thank you. I'm, I'm really, <laughs> Thank you, Richard. I'm glad to be here, and uh, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Would you like to say one or two quick little things about your impressions at MASK? Oh, yeah. Uh, I attended the uh, mm -hmm. MASS, MASC conference, uh, what, two weeks ago now, almost. Yeah, a week and a half ago, right? Yeah, it was, it was a great opportunity to really to see and understand uh, some of the, the policies and, mm -hmm. and some of the workings of the policies from around the state, uh, a little different angle, and also to collaborate with other school committee members and mm -hmm. talk, hear what the differences are across the state. Uh, the, the challenges are pretty bold uh, for, the, for, the, for the whole of us mm -hmm. um, and to learn how they approach some things. So I thought it was great, a great opportunity for me to um, see a little different side of things. So it was great. Oh, yeah. I know, and there's going to be another new policy coming that we'll have to be working on maybe by the end of um, December because Mike Gilbert wants to wrap it up before he retires. So there's, there's always going to be work on policy. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, then I wanted to say I had my normal, that is so stimulating, my normal frustration. A couple of different units of time, there were three programs I wanted to be a part of and they are scheduled at the same <laughs> time so anyway that's a happy problem to have and you know there are 341 towns and cities in Massachusetts when you break it down into school districts it drops down to 324 because of regional schools over 800 people they went there all at once, but over 800 people attended that, and 323 of those school districts were represented. Oh, and they, they all promised, we're not going to tell you which one didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to say that if Juliet was in a musical in 2011. She wasn't in it. I just remember there was something in those years. Right, right, right. Well, That was one thing she didn't do. That one was thing one she thing. Didn't do. Okay. <laughs> But at least once in seven years, yes. we had a fantastic musical. Bravo to the musical that happened on our own Foxborough High School stage this past weekend. Oh, it's that was fantastic. sad. I was away. I wanted to see it. Oh, I mean, the energy of teenagers. It is like, it was great. 
Well, and a large a number of the performers were uh, freshmen and sophomores, I believe. I know we had five senior men, five senior boys who uh, were in the pl in the musical, but but the they majority of them were younger ones, and, right. and so, so we have the future looks bright. <laughs> the future yes. looks bright. Musical future looks bright. I'm not going to forget you. Um, I just wanted to say thank you to all of our parent volunteers. We've had all of our book fairs mm -hmm. in our respective schools the last couple of weeks. And it's an exciting thing for students. They look forward to it. And most of it can't happen without the time that our parents give. And that's not the only way they give their time, but it's one recent one. So thanks to the parents. We appreciate you. Adam. OK, I, one of the piece I wanted to add about Footloose, too, I agree, awesome. What I started to think about was the amount of time that they had to be able to pull off what they did. Yeah. It Eight really weeks. was a short Eight amount weeks. of time. Yep to be able to accomplish mm -hmm. what they did. And even with that crazy snow on Thursday night, mm -hmm. we still had um, a huge showing for opening night. So that was fantastic. One of the other things that I wanted to mention, Suffolk Construction had reached out to us. Um, this was about three, four weeks ago now. And they had, as part of their leadership team, it was kind of a, a spur of the moment. They were doing a partnership with Wish for Wheels where they were their leadership team was building bicycles, and they built 100 of them. So they then wow. wanted to donate them to students or to kids in need bikes. So they reached out and asked if we would be interested. And so Bill and I had had a, a number of calls back and forth with them, and they donated 100 bikes to us for first and second grade age students. We then ended up having parents put in for a raffle, and any student that actually put in for the raffle was awarded a bike and a helmet and a helmet wow. that went with them as That's well great. we actually then ended up having 35 of them that did not go out so called the charter school and then they did the same thing nice. so just want to thank Suffolk construction um, for their generosity it was Reed Bundy who's the director of their corporate citizenship oh, that's great. for reaching out to us and we've sent them a couple of pictures of the kids Get coming up to pick up their bikes nice. so that was just it was a, a great surprise, a mm -hmm. last minute surprise, but a, a wonderful surprise for our students. Very generous. The other thing that I wanted to mention that we started last year, which is homework free breaks. So we have four of those when we had talked about our social emotional learning program review. And what are some things that we can do some action steps? So last year we took the Thanksgiving break, the holiday break in December, February and April, and they were homework free breaks so students could spend time with their families. If they have, example, long-term projects, they're assigned at a time to where it doesn't have to be completed over the break. It's um, where they have plenty of other time to do that. So just a reminder that we value our families and want our families to be able to spend time together over the Thanksgiving break and to have a very happy Thanksgiving. Did you say we started that last year? I'm last sorry. Last year. Yes. Thank you very much. Did we get feedback from it? Yes, yeah. we did. Oh, a yes. lot of okay. really positive really feedback. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, and so principals are, you know, in buildings, are again, reminding everyone that I it went really idea. well last year. And you know, one of the other things that we had done was midterms starting a little bit later. So there's some, some little things that we're trying to make where it makes a difference. And sometimes those little things make a big difference. Mm -hmm. they really do. Oh, absolutely. Oh, they uh, brought the dogs in for the finals. Oh, yeah. Yes. The, th the therapy, therapy, dogs. The therapy yeah. dogs. That was one. That was one of the workshops, mm -hmm. but I couldn't go to oh, that. One. <laughs> oh, uh, I have brought back material. I know you're particularly interested in, on early start um, start times. Oh, the research. And there, around you know, the research, and there's some very positive things. Okay, great. Thank you. I will get it to you. And thank you for the books that you brought back. Yes, thank for you us oh, as well yes, from the thank conference. You. They were left on 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 chairs empty chair. people didn't take them I said okay. I know so every principal oh. has one Sue Forrest the you know the special we're all covered thank you so much for thinking of us well thank mass conference <laughs> happy Thanksgiving everybody I'll make a motion to adjourn second all in favor aye adjourn okay. 759 happy